in Buenos Aires at the Ministerial Conference in 2017 in December, 120 countries endorsed the Declaration on Women's Economic uh, Empowerment. This is a critical declaration in terms of turning the tables and starting a conversation about what it's going to take to bring women into full economic equality. As my minister, Minister Champagne, has said, how can you play a soccer game when half of the team is on the bench? And we firmly believe that, and we want to talk about and start examining what it's going to take to have full economic participation of women at the WTO, and Geneva is a really great place to start. So if we want to have equality, we need to have economic equality, and we need to start talking about what it is that we know, what it is that we don't know, in order to ensure that women have the best access possible to economic opportunity. So that is why I am an international gender champion. One might say, um, yes, you up in the north from Sweden, you, you can tell us how easy it is. But we do understand it takes time. As I said, it has taken us hun about 100 years from trying to prevent that young women who are not married, who, who got children out of wedlock, was actually uh, looked upon as outcasts and their children were bastards. And these uh, societal leaders hundred years ago told themselves this can't be because these are human beings, these are people who, who do a lot of good in society. So, so they started on uh, uh, legislative projects to uh, allow abortion, for example, uh, and then a whole range of, of legal measures from taxing both women, men and women in individually, which has given women a chance to uh, earn their living and be independent. Uh, and it's a matter of human rights. There is absolutely no justification, no advantage uh, in anybody being discriminated against in terms of equal rights, equal opportunities. And yet we seem, and we have lived for decades with manifest uh, gender inequality, particularly uh, from an ILO perspective in the world of work. We need to put our feet on the accelerator collectively to make equality happen now, not tomorrow, not the day after, but right now. I think that the role of gender equality is one of those questions I'm always surprised that we're still asking why gender equality. You know, when we think about where the globe came together, the whole world came together with the Sustainable Development Goals, those goals are not achievable, whether we're talking about poverty reduction or we're talking about justice or peace or disarmament. None of that's possible if we don't engage 50% of the world's population who are women and girls. More importantly than ever is time for women and men and boys and girls to come together and work together to a world that it manifestly is fair and just and that manifestly takes advantage of, of the innate human qualities that are in both men and women and girls and boys. Fifty percent of that humanity is too important to ignore, including them, supporting them, having them you know, to play their role the fullest will make us all richer. It'll make us all also uh, better you know, in uh, what we do, in the social capital we built, in the workplace you know, that is more supportive, that is more enabling, but also in the results that we would like to achieve you know, in the pursuit you know, of our goals. But beyond the workplace, beyond the programs and beyond the achievements, we just have to come back to what is most important. It is each of us counts, and unless each of us is included, each of us will miss something.
it starts with you. Stop making excuses, just do it. If we all start making a change within ourselves, we can't accept excuses anymore. We just have to go ahead, make the change with yourself, and that will start to change the world. It seems actually vital to me to be a gender champion. Our work involves development, humanitarian, political and economic work. And it's clear to me that we will not achieve any of our goals and we will not achieve the sustainable development goals or the objectives of the 2030 Agenda without gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls. And so starting in my own office and working with other colleagues across the system, it was clear to me that we have to focus on the empowerment of women and girls and focus on gender equality because in themselves they are the right thing to do but in terms of the goals we have set ourselves internationally they are absolutely essential and we will not succeed without pursuing them. So there are many barriers to the advancement of women in society. They can be cultural, they can be institutional, and they can be legal. And it's relatively easy to remove legal barriers because with political will you can pass laws which remove barriers which are perceived. But what is very, very difficult to remove are cultural barriers and institutional barriers because they require attitudinal change, sometimes workplace attitudinal change. And for this, I think uh, they constitute the greatest barriers to the empowerment of women. Pourquoi devons-nous avoir euh, une parité donc de genre Ce ne doit point être surprenant pour quelqu'un comme moi qui travaille dans une organisation humanitaire de se focaliser sur l'humanité, l'humanité que nous partageons, cette humanité qui est diversifiée où chaque membre de cette humanité compte. Il y aurait 50% de cette humanité, donc serait une faute grave fondamentale quant à l'environnement que nous devons créer pour nous appuyer mutuellement dans la poursuite de nos actions et de nos programmes et pour les résultats que nous voulons obtenir. Mais au-delà des programmes et des résultats, il s'agit tout simplement donc de revenir à l'essentiel que chacun de nous compte et que chacun de nous doit être impliqué. Et en cela, la parité des genres est un marqueur extrêmement important qui doit contribuer à cette une humanité que nous partageons tous et qui doit aussi nous réunir et nous souder ensemble. First of all, it requires political attention. It requires parliaments and governments to enact the necessary laws to end discrimination against women, to end violence against women, and to create an enabling atmosphere of gender equality. Then it requires a big investment in education. And it's investment. It's not spending money because it's not a cost. It's an investment in the future of a society. And then I would also highlight the access to sexual reproductive health and rights. Nothing promotes em women's empowerment. Nothing promotes women's participation in society as having access to make informed decisions on whether and, how, and when to start a family, how many children, and to decide how they want to contribute to society. It's not easy, it's not an easy thing to do, but it's the right thing to do. I work in a sector which is very big, which is to deal to do with chemicals, products and consumers. And what I've seen is many people, for example, working in factories, exposed to chemicals, the issue of gender is not really dealt with. So my aim is to create more awareness, create more rules and principles that will guide gender implementation in factories, in the production of, of products, and also in the dissemination of these products to consumers and how they are exposed, of course, to these products.
One of the things that we are trying to do together with Interpeace is set up a group that deals with um, gender issues and peace and security because there seems not to be a lot of um, um, activities going on in that, uh, in that field. Obviously, it starts at the top. It has to do with leadership. And if agency heads are not providing that on a regular basis, then it will not, equality will not occur. Secondly, we need a goals. We need to have specific goals. I'm not talking quotas necessarily, but if we don't have specific goals, we will not reach uh, where we want to be. Thirdly, we have to have an implementation plan. We need to measure these goals regularly see if they're being implemented, and if they're not, we need to ask why. We need also to be very severe uh, with those who do not share the view and who are themselves actively creating workplace harassment, which often leads to sexual harassment, which can lead to sexual exploitation, and eventually to gender-based violence. There are three steps to getting gender equality. The first is obviously changing the numbers of women, but that's only the first step. Second step is changing the institutions and the systemic barriers that exclude women, consciously or unconsciously, so that they are opened up and women can thrive in positive environments. And the third thing we need to do is to fix the knowledge. That's everything from the way that we capture knowledge to the way we budget, the way we analyze, and uh, then we'll be on our way. I think it's very simple because it's the right thing to do. Half of our population is male, half is female, and why exclude one half of the population, be it male or be it female? But I think there is also a wider um, issue that we should also uh, keep in mind when talking about gender equality, it's diversity. We are in a changing world and we should make sure that we have all strata of society that are represented in our workplace to be able to cope with all the new challenges and the new, uh, and the new uh, issues that come up. If we only have one group of people in our workforce, for example male people, I think it will weaken our workforce and it will weaken the, uh, the work we, we do. I believe that having worked all my life in multicultural environments, the cultural mindset is probably the biggest obstacle and the biggest uh, opportunity in a, in a way. Institutions need to change and they are entrenched in the, in the cultural mindset. Legislation, of course, needs to change, but particularly norms and mores and practices. why we need gender equality. As far as I'm concerned, it's a no-brainer, both in terms, in economic terms, in social terms, in peace terms, in every aspect of human activity, unless we bring in women on equal footing with men and we together um, address the massive issues that we're going to be faced with and we are already facing, um, we're not going to make it. And certainly we're not going to make it as well as we uh, would if everybody is part of the solution.